Good morning, grade 10s. This video is on analytical geometry. Um, it's a very, it's, it's not a difficult section. And so I'm giving you a summary to start off. I'm giving you a summary of all the different um, formulas. And once you learn those formulas and you learn how to use them, you really will find this section fairly simple. Um, okay, so I'm gonna explain to you what each formula is for. This is your distance formula, and it says x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, and then you square root that. Okay, now in analytical geometry, your x and your y are your um, coordinates. So for example, if I have my set of axes, and this is the point um, 3 and 5, all right, this will represent your x, and this will represent your y. You guys know this. If this is your x and your y axis, this is your y and this is your x. Okay, then let's say over here, I have a point negative, uh, oh, sorry, uh, let's, that's not negative, 2 and negative 4. Let's say that's my point. Okay, again, this is your x and that is your y. So if this is a line, Okay, this, let's say this is point A and that's point B. And they say they want the distance between point A and point B. You will use the distance formula and your x2 and your x1 are your coordinates here. That Let's say you can choose any one you want to be 2 and 1. So basically the rule with these formulas is if I start with this point, I'm going to start with that point again. Okay, so I know it sounds weird, but let me show you. Okay, so I've just shown you here your distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, so if I'm going to use these two points, right, to fill in this formula, it's going to look like this. And if I choose, let's say I start with this point and I make x2 this x, then when I start this one, y2, I must make y this one and start with this one. Okay, so let's just say I'm going to start with this point. So it's 3, so y2, I mean x2 minus x1. So this is your other x coordinate, which is 2 squared plus now, I started with this as x2. Now, I must go back and make this y2. So, it's 5 minus this y1, which is negative 4. And remember, minus, so it would be minus, minus 4. That whole thing is going to become a plus. Okay. Now, you can plug that whole thing into your calculator and you will get an answer. That is quite simple. All right. The next uh, formula is midpoint, so it's x1 plus x2 over 2 gives you your, this will give you your x part of the coordinate. And y1 plus y2 over 2, that will give you the y point of the coordinate. Remember, a midpoint is a coordinate. So let me get an extra page, then I can show you. Okay, so if this is my line, okay, let's say this is... Um, 5 and 7 and this is negative 2 and negative 4 okay your midpoint will be a point that is halfway through that line okay and this is how you get each coordinate so if they ask for the midpoint of this line I'm going to have x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2 all right, so remember you choose one of the coordinates to be 1 and one of the coordinates to be 2. It doesn't matter which one you do, but if I choose that this is x1, that will be y1. If I choose this is x1, that will be y1. So you just stick with whichever point you labeled. Okay, so let's say now I want to work this out. So my midpoint over here, let's say this is x1, so it's going to be 5 plus x2 will be this negative 2 and then remember plus minus 2 will just become minus 2 over 2 
then y1, I must go back to this because I started with this one as x1. So it'll be 7 plus, and this is negative 4, and it'll be all over 2. So essentially, this is going to become 5 minus 2 over 2, and this will become 7 minus 4 over 2, which is just going to become 3 over 2, and 7 minus 4 is also 3 over 2. Okay, so that would be your coordinate. Alright, so I hope you understand what I mean by x1 and x2. You must make sure if you start with one point, you go back to that point again. Okay, um, the next one is gradient. Gradient we always represent with an m. Okay, now gradient basically means how steep or um, how flat a, a curve, or sorry, not a curve, a line is. So if this is a um, ramp, okay, your gradient is how steep or how flat this line is. Okay, so this formula is simple. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You basically do the same thing as you do here. You just replace the y's and the x's with the coordinate. So let's say I want this gradient for this line over here. Let's say I choose this to be y2. Okay, I just decided 5. Okay, so it's going to be 5 minus your other y coordinate, which is negative 4. So it's minus, minus 4 over, then I go back to x2, which I decided was this one. So it's 3 minus 2. Then remember, minus, minus becomes a plus, so it becomes 5 plus 4, which is 9, over 3 minus 2 is 1. So this gradient is just 9. Okay, so using these formulas are very simple. Now, the inclination one is a little bit more tricky. Um, the inclination is to do with the angle between the x-axis and the line. Okay, so that sounds weird, but basically, if this is your x-axis, and here's your line over here, okay, you are looking at the angle between it. Now, it always starts here by the x-axis, and it goes clockwise okay so this angle over here is theta remember you guys have started trigonometry before so you remember that theta is just basically um it's like a letter it represents the angle okay so that would be theta so this is a different formula for gradient okay uh, they call this the angle of inclination this theta over here is called the angle of inclination they will often ask you in a test for or to calculate the angle of inclination okay so basically m which represents gradient is equal to tan of this theta this angle of inclination so let's say for example uh, let me get a clean page let's say for example they want you to calculate um this angle of inclination so let's say i've got something that looks like this and then I know this point is 3 and um, 7 and okay let's just make so this is my y-axis and that's my x-axis so that's 3 and 7 then I choose this to be negative 5 and 3 okay and I want to know the angle of inclination I remember the angle of inclination starts with your x-axis and it goes up until your line so this over here is your angle of inclination you want to calculate that so your formula says gradient is equal to tan of theta and this is theta so if they if they're looking for the angle of inclination they are looking for theta okay so gradient is equal to that so it would be a good idea to go and calculate the gradient now, do we not have a formula for gradient? We do. It's y2 minus y1. So m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's calculate. So y, let's start with this one, 7 minus this y. Oh, this should actually be negative 3, sorry. Clearly it's in the negative part. So it'll be net minus minus 3. Remember, those two will become a plus or over x you can go back to this one three minus minus five so it will become a plus so this will become seven plus three 
over 3 plus 5, which will become 10 over 8, which is the same as 5 over 4. So your gradient is 5 over 4. But remember, we are trying to calculate um, theta. Let me just get my calculator. This is what we are trying to calculate. So m is equal to tan theta. But did we not go and calculate m? We got 5 over 4 equals tan theta. So if I want theta by itself, remember if you want an angle, you guys should remember this, what do we do? We say shift tan and we use the answer, which is 51,34 degrees. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Remember, whenever you're trying to find the angle, you shift. All right. Okay, so that is how you can use this to get theta. Sometimes you, they'll maybe give you the angle and then you must calculate the gradient by punching it in. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to make clear is this angle of inclination always goes clockwise. So, if this is my line, maybe this way, okay? The angle of inclination, it's not this angle. It's this whole angle, okay? It's this whole angle over there, okay? So, when you go and calculate it, make sure that you get the reflex angle but when we because i'm going to continue by doing proper examples now exam questions when i get to one of these i will show you what to do all right but i hope that you understand and that makes sense okay lastly there's one extra little note that i need to show you here you guys know this is the perpendicular sign and that's the parallel sign when two lines are perpendicular if you multiply their gradients together, you will get negative 1. Okay, so what do I mean by that? If I have two lines, um, let's say they are parallel. This is, let's call this line 1 and this is line 2. If line 1's gradient is negative 2 and line 2's gradient is a half, okay? Watch what happens. Gradient 1 times gradient 2 will be equal to minus 2 times a half. And if you calculate that on your calculator, you will get negative 1. If something is perpendicular, whenever you multiply their gradients, you will always get negative 1. Okay, so usually you, you will use this in a bit of a reverse fashion. Okay, so usually what they'll do is they'll say to you... Um, a, B, let's say this is A, B. This line's gradient is negative 3, okay? Please calculate the gradient of line C, D. Now, you know it's perpendicular, but you need to find the gradient of C, D. All that you have to do, okay, is you take, so this, let's say, a gradient of A, B equals negative 3. To get the gradient of C, D, you must invert it and change the sign. Now, what do I mean by invert? If this is 3 over 5, to invert it, it will become 5 over 3. So, this is the gradient, minus 3. But remember, it's always over an imaginary 1. So, to get a parallel line's gradient, I'm going to flip it so it becomes 1 over 3. And I'm going to change the sign. It was a negative, so it now becomes a positive. Okay, so if they ever tell you that two lines are perpendicular, and you need to somehow, either you need to use the gradient, or you need to find the gradient, um, you are going to flip it, and you are going to change the sign, if it is perpendicular. Okay. And if it is parallel, the gradient is the same. So in other words... If I have two lines that look like this, so this is AB and this is line CD. Okay, this line's gradient is 5. Because these are parallel, this one's gradient will also be 5. I mean, if you think about it, the inclination is the same, the angle is the same here, so their gradient must be the same. 
Okay, so this is basically like a summary page. I'll send a picture of this to the group. This is what you need to know for analytical geometry before you can go and answer questions. So make sure you copy this down, make sure you study the formulas. They will usually give you the formulas, but you need to know how to use them. Okay, let me check how many minutes we are.